Hey, welcome back everyone to Hearts of Iron 4 with the Millennium Dawn mod of China with this crazy, basically World War 3 that we have right now. Now, I am not 100% sure as to the future of this campaign, and you'll see why. Now, I've skipped ahead a tiny bit, very, very tiny bit, and, um, well, you can see this like very very easily like what's going on you can see just the ridiculous amount of <laughs> divisions that everyone threw against me uh because of darky being in cstio and a few of other things it's actually gonna be real real difficult to continue fighting this war never mind uh bringing it to a successful conclusion but we'll see what we can do we'll see um we'll definitely need to use our air forces to the best of our abilities uh, which might not be easy, but hey. Alright, let's actually get this. This is gonna help a lot if we do this. Actually, apparently Western China is like a really weird air zone because the center's here. So I don't know. Um, we're gonna have to do some weird min-maxing to get some good results um, right now. So basically I'm just working with encirclements and trying to get those underway, but it's difficult, it's difficult. Because our enemies have a lot of shit. Yeah, as you can see, like, for example, look at all these troops. That's difficult to fight. Um, even though they're, like, pretty crap divisions, it's difficult terrain and all that, so it's really, really difficult to actually get battles where you win. Which obviously, you know, in the long term, is gonna make it difficult. However, if we can get like these piecemeal encirclements, we can eventually just whittle down at their at their division count. The thing is, is it gonna be worth it for me to record all these videos? It will definitely involve a lot of skipping if we want to resolve the war against Russia. And you know, just just looking at the situation just tells me that like a war with the U.S. would be well. It would not be all that fun. Especially because uh, limited conflicts and limited warfare is not, like, implemented yet. Like, we're gonna have to fight this one through until the Russians are completely defeated. And that's gonna be quite the annoyance, to be honest. But, hey. Uh, we're gonna do our best. So as you can see, like, for example, three Russian divisions just off the bat. Oh, as long as we get doctrines though, I'm pretty sure the AI does not like really research doctrines all that much. So that's gonna be useful. And if we can encircle like big stacks like this one, it's gonna speed up the whole process by quite a bit. I don't want you guys moving through like that. Yeah, it would be really, really awesome if it wasn't such a shitty terrain to be honest. But Hey, that's what we're working with. Like, for example, we could conclude this encirclement if it wasn't for a... If it wasn't for the fact that this is mountain terrain. And so, by definition, it's just quite impossible. Now, the fact that Pakistan is uh, with the CSTO is real, real nice. But, uh, unfortunately, it's gonna be really, really difficult to get other C uh, CSTO members. And, uh, yeah, that's really, really sad because our opponents are gonna get some, or sorry, not, C not CSTO, um, Shanghai Pact. I'm pretty sure you, you understood what I was talking about. Well, eventually our opponents are gonna get more allies, so I don't know. It's just not good. It's really not good. And now the Russians, I believe, have basically all of their divisions. Oh, Elizabeth War informs new government, of course. So now we have progressives in the United States. Damn that flag. So they're back to Western. Shit, but they cannot they cannot withdraw volunteers because that's not a thing in Millennium Dawn. So all their like retarded intervention forces to our enemies. I'm pretty sure like a lot of the American army is deployed doing that at this point because if we take a look at the world tension by country and we go to the united states like for example you can see already over here the brazilians 
have sent like 13, you know, like look at how many divisions the Brazilians have sent. That must be like over a hundred overall. They have 174. If we take a look at Brazil, look at all these volunteers. Look at that. Volunteers, volunteers. I'm not looking at like what they have or well, I am, but <laughs> it's okay. So look at it, look at that. And the real army is 48 divisions. Well, the real army, the army at home is 48 divisions. While they have like 170 something, that means that they're deploying like a, over 100 overseas to our enemies. And I'm pretty sure the United States is gonna have a similar situation. Eh, not as much, not, not as radically as the Brazilians, like 12 plus nine, 21, 25, 30, 18 divisions to 48 divisions. 48 fucking divisions. Now at some point, Hopefully the the Russians are gonna get like offensive war penalties of some kind because uh, I think that that's how this uh, public war wariness works. Eventually they'll just get a bunch of penalties and maybe they'll offer a ceasefire, but that's a very very much a maybe. All right, that is very much a maybe. But basically what's happening is that we're fighting the entire world, in case you haven't realized that. And, um, yeah, like for example, some fronts, like for example, Xinjiang, there's no way this is ever moving. Like, with how many divisions they have, it's just not gonna happen, you know? Unless we get like a very cheeky encirclement in some, somehow, some way. That's, uh, you know, pretty much off the, 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 you know, off the possibilities, off the charts. To be fair, what's kind of hilarious is that we're fighting the whole world and winning, <laughs> so that's, it's pretty funny. But yeah, then that, that, that will probably not last for too long. Also because this uh, terrain has some pretty shitty infrastructure, so we cannot really support all that many troops. Although that's probably the same for these other guys as well. Yeah, you want to send your expeditionary forces, but I don't really particularly want them. Don't really particularly care for the expeditionary forces. If there was any point in which you could fight them without like having either shitty terrain or a terrible choke point, that'd be quite good, but unfortunately not. Like we only collide in really terrible places. It would be hilarious if we if we managed to sort of come back in Kenya, get them as an ally and fight a bunch in Africa. <laughs> Although to be fair, the terrain here is horrible as well. We could abuse Uganda over and over. We could, but we're not gonna. Now, is there like any semblance of an organization to what I'm doing? Now yeah, that's that's okay. Oh, right, I have a bunch of divisions over here that I can redeploy. But like, do I have divisions over here with these guys? No. So actually. It would be quite advantageous to start getting uh, battle plans formed up at this point because those are gonna give us pretty good bonuses. Holy crap. That's a lot of guys, potentially. It's a lot of guys doing more useful things than they're doing right now. Oh yeah, right, I had some guys over here. It's, it's fine, I can use the special forces to guard the fucking North Korean border. And you know, all the mechanized, not like they can do anything, to be honest. They can't really do anything. Hmm, it's interesting how the Malaysians haven't joined 
any bad people. <laughs> Man, we have a war that they may be drawn into. That's really sad for China because, you know, uh, the only way to get people into your faction is through world tension. And the only way to get world tension really is um, lots of fighting. Huh, you're only over here. So I might as well do this with you as well. And yeah, basically, like, the only way to get, uh, and you're over here. Right. Okay. This is a really bad idea. What? Okay. This is a really bad idea because generally when the situation is something like this, it's better to... It's better to not let the AI do anything, but <laughs> that's fine. Up here it's much better. All right. What can we even do, honestly, at this point? Right, I have a random airborne. I could use the airborne for some cheek breek. They just have so many troops. It's a big, big issue, honestly. But that China looks pretty good, doesn't it? It does, in my opinion, look pretty good. I love the random German suicide charges in the highlands of fucking Kazakhstan. Kyrgyzstan leaves the SCO. Oh, really now? Really now, Kyrgyzstan? How dare you leave the SCO? <laughs> with your free divisions and being at war with me. I wonder how many um, Indian divisions have been sent to these random enemies. Come on, India. Show me. What? Is the game bugged? Because India most definitely sent divisions. Or maybe they do not uh, make world tension when they do that. Yeah, look at all these intervention forces. Maybe India, for some reason, doesn't do world tension when that happens. Hmm. And... Also, I wonder, like, um... I wonder exactly, like, uh, this uh, Confederate Asian nations, if they can expand to anyone? You know, Bangladesh is also nationalist, but... Bangladesh nationalists should not be too happy with Indian nationalists, to be fair, so... Who knows? Alright, I think uh, we've got the planning bonus set up. Pretty much everywhere. I guess it's time to start the attrition. Let's see what happens if we force attack this one. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. Man, look at that uh, Northern Alliance General. What the fuck? He's got literally all the traits, you know? Yeah, I know. That did not work out. There's just a bit too many of them in defensive positions. Also, they appear to have air superiority. Somehow? No, we have air superiority. Oh, cause it's because we've got no strike planes over here. Really? Are we sure about this? Because, you know, we've got all these strike fighter wings. Huh. 
currently active support plane zero. Are you actually... Oh yeah, you are bombing enemy troops. Not nearly as much as I'd like, to be honest. Fucking stop, hello? Hmm. Not nearly enough. What else can we do with our airplanes? Yeah, we've got all these guys because I was... I was honestly for a while more concerned about... Uh, huh, anti-air missile wing. I was honestly a little bit more concerned about, like, the US for a long time than Russia. Hmm. Like how at this point these guys have a fighter ace and they're really veteran because they, the Russians just keep sending guys. We'll send these extra support lanes up here. You know, infantry might not be the worst idea to fight around here, but these infantry divisions are pretty terrible. Pretty terrible, in general. Alright. Get me more land doctrine. Yeah, see, like, even... Even with the planning bonus, we just have less attack than they do because of the whole terrain nonsense. They've even got really high base value division, so I'll give the AI that. Entrenchment, terrain, commander, skill, experience. It's fucking David Petraeus, Jesus Christ. Yeah, a bit too many Americans. <laughs> a bit too many Americans in the frozen tundra. No Cambodia. I do not particularly care. Oh, not, not that. You know, honestly, if we get enough air force, eventually we're gonna attrition them out. Likely, because air force is ridiculous. But, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't think it's gonna be all that fun <laughs> to do. That's a problem. Alright. Man, look at all these North Koreans just... Starving in Tajikistan. Starving in Tajikistan. Excellent. Huh. I don't know, there must be some insane way to trick the AI. Oh, of course, election campaign. Emerging propaganda, thank you. Wonder if, like, national unity governments are a thing in this one. Right, see, like, for example, if I did this, it would be a really easy victory or who to attack. Uh, the nationalist fools. See, like, look at this. If, if it was all like this, it would be so easy. It would be so incredibly easy. But it's not all like this. Um, unfortunately, there's also like mountains. And that makes everything more difficult. Although to be fair, like for example, look. Uh, but then it goes into, oh no, that's also hills. See, it looks like mountains, but it's actually hills. Like we could push over here in this area, like, really, really easily, and then come, like, be like, whoopsie! And, uh, reach, like, Kemerovo, and at that point the Russians are gonna be like, oh my god, and send all their troops there. I don't know, uh, I feel like that's, uh, something that we need to consider, at the very least. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna end the episode right here, we haven't accomplished Jack Spain has triggered Article 50. 
Fucking hell. I mean, at this point, the EU is gonna be like, what? So, French Republic, the Germans are out. Italy, Belgium, Netherlands. Uh, of course, Netherlands is... Inclusive out outcome? Okay. How very interesting. Wait, where is the election thing? All right. Um, we have a 35%, we need 41%. Oh, whatever. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that, that was not that difficult. The Sokdem Federation for a Democratic China. Obviously. Those Sokdems. Uh, yeah, Luxembourg is out, of course. The UK is in, Ireland is in, Poland is in, even though they're nationalist. The Czechs are in, even though they're nationalists, and I think they, they triggered Article 50 at some point. FPO is fucking in charge in, in Austria. We're at war with Yugoslavia, and Milosevic died? What the hell? Didn't even know Milosevic could die in Millennium Dawn. I just thought he didn't die. Guess he's got a death event. That's what you... That's what you learn about playing Millennium Dawn. Then Milosevic dies. Anyway, um, yeah, I think I'll be back when I've found a way to break the stalemate. And I think um, that way is gonna have to come through, you know, this region in general. So yeah, I wanna thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you soon. And hopefully, have a good day.